OK， 你<笑> calling to see whether I was down? OK， yeah. I don't know what happened. It just shut down my stream for some stupid reason. Oh shit! No audio. Okay, you got audio now? Okay. <laughs> that would make a difference, yes. Boat swarms. Level three. Goblin, lizard men, or cobalt swing to mind. Either that or an undead horde. Uh, it depends. Are you using the minion rules, DM Stretch? Like a swarm of bloody cobalts of like 300 cobalts, each of them having one hit point. <laughs> yeah, she held the door. <laughs> I haven't seen the gate, Dizzy, so I don't know what about that one. And if you wonder, I smoke because it's part of my medication. Oh, wait a minute there. GG Games followed me. Well, thank you. I'm friend. I'm both here. Yeah, smoking is part of my medication that keeps me from killing people. Just ask Javon. Oh yeah, you... You gotta live in Canada, man. We have a pot shop in the same building, like right next door, doors side by side, as the Canada government office. <laughs> okay, thanks, that's look at. Uh, Dizzy, uh, how you bro do chase scenes is to remember that most things are going to to boil down to extended tests, right? In other words, um, you set, say, uh, you got to make so many dex tests, so many uh, constitution tests or whatever to get away. No, I got a grow cabinet for my weed plants. Right? Um, and they've got to get so many to catch you. Okay, Dazzle Cat's going to... Okay. Nistling, adult.
Tiny humanoid, sorry, and any alignment, I'm sure that is. Armor class 10 plus dexterity. Hit points, 3d6 plus con. 3d6, 6, 12. If you're giving them average hit points, all right, uh, the average for 3d6 is 10.5. Right, so they should actually have seven or eight hit points. Disadvantage when attacking in daylight or bright light, okay. Okay, so. Same foe. You want to put the word same in there. Your damage rating is wrong here for the drop rock drop. If you upped it. You know, um, I think for something that is that small, 1d4 is way more reasonable. Alright, and a d4 assumes the dagger is medium sized. Right? are they using medium sized daggers? And same with a light crossbow. Okay, so they are using regular size daggers. Oh, the size should be small. Okay. Yeah, well, you've got them as tiny humanoids. Yeah. Tiny humanoids. Yeah, you're missing the S in plus here under there. Another interesting little uh, creature that I uh, sort of like. Yeah. Yeah, they are very quick for tiny creatures. 30 feet and fly at 30. Are they small size or tiny size? <laughs> Wait. Okay.
still have this damage or that damage wrong. One of the two. This is D6 plus 3, this is a D4 plus 2. And are they using medium sized weapons? I don't know. Does 5th edition even differentiate between medium and small sized weapons? I don't even know. Minus one at nine, eight or nine. So you are not taking into account their constitution adjustment here for hit points. Because they have a minus one modifier, and on 3d6, that's 10.5 minus 3 for having three hit days. And as I say, it's just your uh, formatting is wrong in this one part down here under the rock, drop rock. All right. It's all good for that, but. I think what she's asking, Dazzle Cat, is what do you mean by poison for three successful attacks? Oh, it lasts for three successful hits. On the blade, on the on the dagger or the or the light crossbow bolt.
Don't be as more obtuse than you have to be, Siobhan. There's a wink for you. Um, okay, the other thing I have to ask is, uh, where does their, all their damage come from with the dagger? They have a seven strength. Do they do a D4 plus three? Ah. They should write that down somewhere that they use their dex bonus for attacking damage. Do we have that somewhere? I didn't see that. Or is that automatic in 5th edition if you're small size or something? Oh, okay. And what about on the crossbow? Where does the damage bonus come on that? Or is that part of 5th edition 2 that you get your dex bonus on damage with crossbows? In 5th edition you get your dex bonus to damage with ranged weapons? Oh, okay, cool. Makes uh, rapier fighters a little more useful and archers. Um, do you still have great bows and stuff like that? Would you add your strength as well as your dex? Like composite longbows and stuff? Do you still have those? Add your strength. Uh, ranges dex on hits, not damage. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what it was in all, in all the other editions, so I imagined it would be in the same too, but hey. Why the hell not? Okay. Can you finesse a crossbow? Well, technically you are. It's all hand-eye coordination. Anyway, yeah, I think that works, and uh, yeah, I would say they're no tougher than a cobalt, so a flying cobalt, and they're not quite near as bright as a cobalt, so hey, no problem, Dazzle Cat, any time, that's what I'm here for, that's what I run the stream for, so you know, and you're helping me too because I'm getting more and more familiar with 5th edition, which is going to be good because I have to convert this game system to it at some point in time.
Yeah, I would agree with your last statement there, Stretch, about strength and uh, combat. Phone's ringing, but I don't give a crap. I'm streaming. Sure, what are you uh, trying to figure out there? Isong will help you. Okay. August report. Love the report. Isong session report. Okay, what are we talking about here? It's ammo in their future course. Sure you meant and here? And their future course of action. They were interrupted by Minx, a pseudo dragon of upset. I think you also meant regroup here. I'm just, I'm just going through for the quick edit, then I'm going to read it through. I think you meant regrouped there. Okay. Okay, August 11 report. General summary. The party finds himself on the main deck discussing the recent battle and their future course of action. They were inter interrupted by Minx. That should be capitalized. Minx is a name. A pseudo dragon who popped his head out of the cook's court room. He squeaked and dashed back in. Copa followed and discovered Lyle the cook calmly topping away at dinner. After a brief conversation, he agreed to show Copa where the captain's quarters were. When he came out of the room, he was surprised and startled by the dead crewmate bodies scattered across the deck. His guard raised, he grabbed for his sword and asked for an explanation. Before he got one, he cut himself off and dashed toward Delian. Misspelled Deli in here. What are you doing here? This isn't Grandma's birthday party, you see, Squid. Come with me. You owe me an explanation. He grabbed Deli and he dragged Deli and back to the kitchen and cargo area. The rest of the party followed. There he explained he was a member of the undercurrent. Okay, he dragged Deli and back, and the cook is the member of the undercurrent? I'm confused here. Or is Deli a member of the undercurrent? Okay. 
right. As a secret organization focused on getting slaves freedom that he was working on the sea ghost as an agent collecting information about a new slave pickup in his home. Okay? Further explain that despite Clem's contrary, his brother was not a member of the organization. Okay. Party agreed to explore the rest of the ship where Lyle and Delian. Delian is spelled wrong again here. And well, Lyle and Delian stayed behind. You have too many ands. Behind to have a family conversation. Coppa and Carowin encountered the lizard folk. Due to language barriers, Coppa carried out most of the conversation. She found out that the lizard folk were awaiting a shipment of some sort. There was an agreement between them and the captain. Despite her attempts at gathering more information, she was unsuccessful. The lizard folk requested that she either propose a trade or leave the room. Meanwhile, Thea and Rana explored the captain's and wizard's quarters. Through some creative collaboration, they found ten electromagnets in a trap chest, seven maps with a familiar symbol, an agreement between the captain and the lizard folk, and a nice pale green flowy shirt. The party regrouped and headed below deck. There they encountered Bloody Bjorn. They, uh, they successfully tricked him into thinking they were part of Sanbalet crew with part of Sambalet crew with another shipment. They tried to ambush him by hiding Caradon in a crate along with dead shipmates. Unfortunately, Bjorn never opened the crates and just closed the door behind him. Stuck in the room without a light source, Caradon was unable to do anything about Bjorn. However, he did discover another humanoid, Oceanus, trapped in the room next to him and started to crawl its way out to help him. Simultaneously, Thea and Rana worked to open the door from their end. Here they came across another pair that kept repeating, repeating shut your mouth. Right, Thea and Rana were eventually able to open the door and free Ocean, Oceana and a horrible vile stench. Oceanus was excited to be free and even more excited to see Kappa and another trident from the Galatha tribe. He and Theo were briefly stored together in the same room sometime after Jane was free, but Theo was traded. Kappa turned into a spider and explored other areas of the ship. On her excursion, she found four crewmates, but no slaves. She relayed this information to the rest of the crew who have decided to actively ambush Bjorn. Rewards granted a spellbook, a scroll, ten electric ingots, a green shirt, and seven maps with random symbol on. Well. Okay, now back to what we're doing here. Okay, what did you plan for them to do? Okay, I'm just gonna go back and read what you had to say there. Yeah, Bob's right. You know you're going to have a Bjorn fight. That's the first thing. What are the lizard men going to do when the Bjorn fight breaks out? All right. All right. Um, you know, they have the 10 ingots. Maybe that's the prize for the lizard men. Yeah, Bjorn could trade his life for information. Like they haven't beaten.
Ichibuya followed me. Thank you. Okay, where is Theo? Why is he beyond their reach? There's the question. Is he beyond their reach? And if he is, why? He's on his way to another country across the sea. Perfect. Right? Then you can tell them that. They can't sail a ship on their own. Right, that'll have them going back to the the city. Right? You could have Bjorn trade his life for telling them that Theo was sold to a ship traveling across the sea to wherever, whatever the name of the country is, or the port of call. Yeah, that's what Strat says. Well, yeah, you got to have a certain amount of crew. You cannot run a ship. It just won't happen. Right? You cannot get the sails around fast enough to luck the wind and stuff like that. Right? So you have to have a minimum crew. And from what I've seen, you've got four or five or six people there. That's not enough to pilot a ship. A small one, single masted schooner or something, maybe, but. Damn, it's hot in this room. Okay, the 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 lizard men are are trading slaves. I don't like that damn stretch. That seems like too much railroading to me. Good night, Tillers. Sleep tight. Talk to you tomorrow. Maybe we'll get uh, a look at that character sheet or something tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, it seems like railroading to me. It's like saying, like, no, I don't want you to do this, so you can't. Right? It's less railroading if you say you just don't have the crew. I sort of did. Uh, um... Yeah, I hear you. I know exactly what you mean there. Isong, right? Um, a not so gentle nudge in the right direction. <laughs> Good 
Yeah. Um, the lizard men might be a good source of information. If they give the players some information about the slave trade or something that they know, or about that gets the characters to go back to the, the city or whatever, then they leave. They may have to go talk to the lizard people. Yeah, a nudge shove, but not a drag, exactly. You can't drag them onto the railroad, right? You have to nudge them that direction. Thing about players is making them think like, yeah? Oh, Laura Bones just raided with a party of 12. <laughs> How's it going, Laura Bones Raiders? And if the cook, Lyle, would have more information, then that's a good way to have him uh, get more involved with the party. Yeah. Right. And if they do get the crew together, they could sail over to where the lizard folk are or something. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. There, I think you got a plan. He saw him. That way you don't stifle any player's creativity in the fact that they've managed to get this ship. And you don't uh, uh, hand them a big ship that they can wreck your campaign with right away. Yeah. It's something you threw in, that's cool. Okay, I gotta take another break. Oh, so what do I have my lizard folk do on the ship? Well, um, what was their deal with the captain? What were they here for? They're supposed to think that the city's being invaded by the lizard men? Ah. Well, that complicates issues a lot. Okay, let me take a break. I'm gonna go refill my drink and I'll uh, think about this while I'm having a break.
Okay, I'm back. <sighs> Sorry about that. So never guarantee your head or fall for up their modules if you want. Yeah, these are the 5th edition modules T-Cats. Yeah, okay. We understand. <laughs> Hubby lost his mind. You had to fix it. Hey, how you going? How you doing, man? I'm only on for about another half an hour. Who's on after me? Oh, right, Kahuna. Kahuna comes on with his own channel, not Kahuna Quiet. It's okay, you're forgiven, Dazzle Cat. Hopefully your players are not too much murder hobos and like to talk first. That's plus. Um, you could always have Bjorn tell them that the captain was selling weapons to them. That'll get them interested. Yeah, exactly.
Well, if he's pleading for his life, he might not even know it's a lie. Maybe it's something the captain told him. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Sunbird spinning something into mo something bigger so he seems more important. Alright, I'm glad we could help, see? Let's just add some crooked. Because it is. Alright, that's really great. So, can I help anybody else with anything? campaign stuff on World Anvil, you mean to actually make a campaign and stuff? Oh yeah, we're running our current Pathfinder campaign using it. Yeah, that's the stuff where you get all the stream stuff there, Siobhan, and uh, you know, write your journals and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, we're using it for our Pathfinder campaign right now, Deskhead. Okay? It takes place Mondays at 6 p.m. Pacific. How did I get my players? Just that's a typo, I think. How do I get my players to use World Anvil? I said you have to use World Anvil for this. Uh, yeah, World Anvil is good for plotting a story, right? Um, I recommend that you spend the eighty bucks and get Master, eighty bucks Canadian. I don't know what it is in American, probably fifty, right? Um. Spend it, get master, and get manuscripts. 55. Yeah, okay. That would make sense. And get manuscripts. They are the bomb. The bomb. Right? Uh, Sable, who's been a professional writer for the last 25 years, right, uh, says it's better than Microsoft Word for your manuscripts. Right? And the autosave can't be beat. All right, I was typing away, do -do 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 -do, did about two hours of typing, right, and the power went out on my computer. All right, uh, the air conditioner blew a fuse. All right, so when we got that reset, right, I uh, fired it back up, and I'd lost five characters. I'd lost the word three. T H R E E in the whole thing. Right? The the autosave saves like almost every character, every second character or something like that. Right? It's like every time you 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 pause to stop typing, it saves. Right? T Cats agrees on with the manuscripts, yeah. And it's saved on like eight different servers or something. That's the that's the thing about it, right? Is that uh, um, World Anvil is running like eight simultaneous servers, right? So even if you crash somewhere, it saves it's redundant seven times over, right? So it's always there. It's a, like you can't lose it. Right? Not unless the world ends. And if the world ends, what the fuck do you care?
Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Aegon's got right there. Yeah, that's what I meant. There you go, and thank you for correcting me. They aren't using eight servers, they're using eight locations for backup storage, yeah. Right, so every time it saves, it saves it to like eight locations in the cloud. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. And if you're linking for your game there, if your game is 5th edition, right, I do recommend Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Right, It's got some learning curve. I'm starting to get through it, but it's not as big of a learning curve as Fantasy Grounds is. And uh, Hard to say, Siobhan, but yeah. The, I know their main server hosting is in New York. That's all I know. Your birthday's next week, eh? You song, I'm gonna remember that. What day? Next Tuesday, okay. I'll wish you a happy birthday on my stream. And embarrass the hell out of you and all that kind of stuff. New decade for you, eh? What's this, 20? Yeah, don't we all? No, I don't wish I was 20 again. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to do it over knowing what I know now. Yeah, actually, I consider, when I consider the great cosmic ramifications of everything, I would change nothing in my past. Because if I did, I wouldn't be where I am today. If all I changed was, you know, whether or not I threw the first punch in that fight in grade 8, right? I might not have ever met Diane. I might not have ever, uh, Sable, right? I might not have ever met Siobhan. I might not have ever met you guys, right? Yeah. I hear you, DM Stretch. I hear you with the problem with Foundry being a one-time purchase. One thing I will say, like, they, they should have a monthly subscription model, yes. All right, I w would... Uh, I would uh, recommend that to them, right? But at least their uh, model for paying for it isn't $150 American, which is what Fantasy Grounds was. Right, so I what is that five ninety nine? Something like that. How much have you got sunk into fantasy grounds now, DM Stretch? 
like in expansion packs and stuff like that. That's the other question too. Yeah, yeah, I hear you on that. Uh, Foundry, they're all free. So, I think. I know the Pathfinder is free. Yeah, I hear you that about Roll20. modules like player's handbook of vernus etc and stuff i don't think they have it actually i think it's all just the uh the system reference document or the pathfinder reference document all right um for pathfinder i don't know what they've got for fifth edition i haven't downloaded it yet i will i will and let you know Yeah, m most of it is community made, as Garth says. Sneaks into class, three hours and twenty minutes late, two hours and twenty minutes late. <laughs> How you doing, Barbarossa? Yeah, there's no official content for Foundry yet, just SRD stuff, so. <laughs> well, you catch the last 20 minutes anyways. Hey, frozen mouth, babe. Yeah, Harold's table is very knowledgeable about Foundry, so. African or European. And in case you were really want to know, it's the average wing beat velocity of an unladen swallow. What, no Monty Python for you, Esau? <laughs> I love Monty Python. I think they're hilarious. Yeah, not every scene is for everybody, that's for sure. You know, I'm... 
really uh, a fan, but. Yeah. Yeah. Faulty Towers is a hoot. John Cleese is brilliant. Okay, he's song you have fun, hon. We'll see you stay out of jail. Yeah, they never did figure out how to end the skit. You're absolutely right there, Bob. To lie, chef, wreck, and comatose. I used to live down the street from Danny John George. I think that's the name of it. Yeah, Danny John George. Guy who plays Cat in Red Dwarf. He used to babysit my girlfriend when she was little. Rimmer. Definitely Rimmer. Yeah, I got a hard time at that, that, actually. Yeah, Rimmer, but that's only because he's so weird. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Holly was funnier when he was a male. That's for sure. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, female Holly was hilly.
So I haven't got Foundry downloaded on this computer yet, but I will probably for the next stream. I want to take a look at it. All right, I'm going to talk to Garth Vader about it a bit and see what he has to say because he's been checking it out for me. Or at least he will be. That I got a couple of players coming over in a couple hours to update their characters for the online game that we do. You didn't do too bad there, Siobhan. I was checking it out. All right. I'll help you with it sometime. What's my favorite comedy TV series? Um, I don't really have one. Don't watch that much comedy. Yeah, I like Night Court too. It was a good one. Mostly because I liked Richard Mole, though, so. No, I never got into Greatest American Hero. Clumsy dorks of that age, Dazzle Cat. Sometimes you ought to go where everybody knows your day. Cheers was great. Yeah, Faulty Towers rank up there with mine. Never got into friends. Just never did. Never had any in real life. Why would I care about them having them in the show?
Yeah, I prefer a lot of old slapstick sort of humor too. Yeah, I was never really big on the Three Stooges. Um, it just wasn't funny. Oh, the Carol Burnett show was funny. Carol Burnett was funny. Black Adder was funny. Faulty Towers is funny. I never seen Dad's Army actually. All right. I don't think we got that one over here. Tim Conway playing any old man. He is funny because he grew up in that and became an old man, and that's what he looked like. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'd be interested in that DM stretch. Yep. I'll take a look at it later. I'm sure I can get it on Flixify. <laughs> Your dad's like Burt Reynolds, eh? That's pretty cool. Oh, I love the low low. No, Kelly's Heroes is a, is a Clint Eastwood movie. Siobhan. Yeah. I 
special sizes only once. Okay, let me do a brief check here. Well, I should now for thing open, so I don't know. Okay, is uh, Kahuna up? Can somebody tell me? I'd like to give a shout out to Kahuna. All right, he's been holding the fort all day, basically doing Kuna quiet, all right, and uh, um, basically it's just a uh, landing stream for you to land on, and uh, uh, if you're looking for who's streaming and you don't know, and you, and because if you don't know who's streaming, you won't know to look, right, he'll fill you in, and uh, now he's going to do Kuna help, all right, that here at... 4 p.m. Pacific, all right, all right, and I agree with you right there on the outset there, DM stretch, I prefer 80s comedy to today too, I use the right keyboard, Okay, thanks for tuning in, guys. All right. Um, I had a lot of fun. I'm glad I could help some of you out. I hope I helped you out there, Dazzle Cat. I know I helped out Esong because she was cheerful about it. So, all right. Uh, we'll see you Friday. Tomorrow, Diane's got Diane Wrights at 1 o'clock till 4. All right. Um, Pacific time. That's the same time that this stream takes place. So, Whatever your time zone is now, this is when it's ending. It starts three hours before from now. All right. And, uh, ah, okay. All right. Um, you know, so, uh, yeah. But give a warm shout out to Kahuna for holding the fort for us, guys. Because he's been doing a hell of a job today. And, uh, yeah, he's just doing it. Because, because nobody else is figuring out who's right, who's doing who, who is up and who is on the Anvilite streamer core, and you know stuff like that, right? Okay, when the clock turns to four, we shall raid Kahuna. There we go. Okay, thank you for joining me. See you next time. and her raiders. I am prepared to be boarded. Forge. Pretty good guy slanders, I think, right there. Light up the forge. I am boarded. I, I consider myself boarded. Dazzly, welcome. RPG Dinosaur Bob, welcome. Thanks for you guys uh, popping into the Kahuna Quiet stream. Um, I'm actually going to start a poll about that here in just a minute. I want everybody to be able to get on in before I start it. Yes, we have lit up the forge, as you can see behind me. Do you want me to turn the fan the on? The forge is my... No, you're good with the fan. I'm good because it's warm in here. 
Because I have a forge burning. Yes, I know. So, you know, with the forge burning, I need the fan. Okay, well, the, the fan is burning. Maybe. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Kahuna on the other side of the green screen. I'm going to go store dinner. She, actually, she's going to go make dinner now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Sable. Oh, Aaron, thank you. Thank you for boarding. Um, yes, it's, it's rather hot because of the forge, so therefore the fan must stay on. Uh, besides, it's been about 100-some degrees all week for like the last, actually for about the, almost the last 10 days, over 100 degrees. We had a 107-degree day. It's supposed to be around 105 this weekend. It's just ugly. Yeah, also not that it worked perfectly well. Look, the forge. And I'm bouncing because apparently my chair is stuck underneath the desk. There we go. No longer You're bouncing. Still wise, baby. All right, yeah. duh. The the vagaries of working in a really small space. Toasty, no toasty. 